Hello everyone and welcome back for another clarinet tutorial from Nottingham Music Excellence. So I'm going to play that tricky study called Swiss Mountain Air in the ABRSM Grade 7 book. Hope you enjoy the video, here we go. Okay, so you've heard the music now, let's say a few words and look at the detail of the music. So in terms of delivery of this piece, it's quite similar actually in a lot of ways to the Off and Back On by Chris Gumley, in the fact that A, you haven't got hardly any rests in the piece at all, it's quite relentless, and there are really clear sort of eight bar phrases here to have a go at. Now the one extra little bonus I think of this piece compared to Chris Gumley's piece is that you have got that pause note halfway through now that you know it is only just a pause note but that I think does make a difference but I think in this piece I think you need it by the time you get there you just need that second or two to to use up your air and then take a really big breath before that next section I think that is a bit of a helping hand compared to the off and back on so have a think about that and if you're maybe if you're playing both of them um, just factor that into your thinking. Now I think for most pupils around this standard the first page a bit like some of the other stuff as well the first page is pretty straightforward so I would I would say try and bring out some of the upper notes of this melody and you can get that kind of two clarinet feel to it I think. and then fill out those other notes. And again, that works for the upper octave as well. So that really is the, the theme of the piece. Um, there's a lot of repetition here. And so you can effectively say that the, the piece is in some ways 
half as long as it actually is because there's so much repetition in there. So I think in terms of learning the music and, and learning the musical ideas and the notation, it's quite straightforward actually. Okay, let's move down a bit and we're going to move down to 33, Piano Cantabile. Now, I've heard a couple of pupils already play this and one or two people on YouTube play it and it's very tempting here. It's so easy to play this, isn't it? It's very tempting to just go off on a completely new tempo. Um, So just make sure that piano cantabile section there at 33 matches up to other music that you've already just played. And that phrasing detail at 37, I think if you play that as written, it sounds pretty cool actually. I quite like that. So slur two, tongue two, slur two, and then slur two, tongue two, slur two. <laughs> As you speed that up, it becomes a little bit more fiddly, but once you've learnt it carefully, that's okay. And then you'll probably find that as you go through bar onto the second page, through bar 44 to 60, I notice when I'm getting to this section, I'm already starting to feel perhaps a little bit edgy with the breathing, getting a little bit more uncomfortable. So make sure that you don't, again, that you don't change speed, just right through this section. that's a, a, a nice little point to reach so when you get to that pause note make sure that you use up the spare air that you've got so empty your tank of air and then fill up for this next section okay so we better talk about 61 I think now this is quite tricky to play there are two ways of kind of playing this going up to the D I noticed when I first just read through it for the first time if you if you play just the D without the little finger it's very easy to play actually. But then I relearned it again. I thought, well, I, I won't be happy with that. So I, I relearned it with left hand C sharps so that I had my right hand little finger free for that D. So let, let me explain that. So, so if I use left hand C sharps there, then it frees up that right hand little finger to get a nice in tune D. So I think really it does need to be played that way. If you cheat and just do that for the D with no little finger, you'll probably notice it's not really quite up to pitch. So um, a bit like the opening theme, if you bring out that upper line there, And then if I fill the notes in there with the left hand C sharp. Try to really use the dynamics here. I think um, the dynamics really need to be in there because they're so black and white, aren't they? And that is one of the difficulties of the piece, I think. So if you're doing a forte. I think you've, you've got to then contrast that with and then change back again. And that does make it just a little bit noticeably more difficult. I think all the interval kind of changing on this, all the interval jumps, does make it a recipe for a few squeaks, I think, this piece. I think, um, there's going to be a lot of pupils having a few squeaks on this piece. And then as we move through 77. So 
So toppy there with the two fingers, make sure you've got your little finger on there as well just to lift up the pitch. So for the E and the D. And then the low register stuff. If you are finding you're getting a lot of squeaks doing these intervals going up to the G, the B and the D, just try and keep the fingers really close to the instrument. I would suggest that you probably, if you're getting a lot of squeaks, try not to play with too soft a setup on the reed and mouthpiece because that will make it quite sort of thin and squeaky as well. And also just try and minimise all the finger work, make sure you've learnt it really slowly and carefully. And just try and play it, maybe try and practice it like a statue and try and try and move everything as a small of movement as you can. So just so it looks like you're not sort of having a bit of a fight with the instrument. So everything right down to a minimum. So in summary, I think this is quite a nice study to play. I think that second page is quite tricky. I'm, I'm tempted to say that this is actually the harder one of the three, just because of the intervals. I, I can't quite make my mind up whether, whether this is harder than the off and back on or the, or the Chris Gumley piece is harder, but I think they're both quite tricky. They're both hard on the breathing. You just don't get any time off in there at all to recover. I think the slightly tricky aspect of this one is the fact that those leaps will cause people to squeak a bit. But I think if you're okay on that and you make a good sound and it's not too squeaky, this might be the piece for you. So I think that's it guys for the tricks and tips on this video. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did find it useful of course, don't even think about leaving the video until you've clicked that like button and maybe consider leaving me a complimentary comment in that section down below. But for this one, that's it. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.